episode of How Would I Paint That? This episode is Snowy River. The reference photo and the painting were sent to me by one of my students in my online course. And let's start with the photograph, the reference. So I see that it is, you know, a very uh, gray day, iced over, a lot, a lot of atmosphere, and um, I first thing I would do when if I were going to paint this is decide what the focus is going to be. So my student chose the two trees on the left, and I think that's a good decision because they have more contrast and. Um, they're vertical against all the horizontals in, in the picture. The composition does really um, point toward the far horizon right now. And, but when I look there, there isn't anything for me to latch onto to really, you know, go, okay, that's the focus. So I, th I am going to stick with the same choice that my student made, which is the two trees on the left. Then the next thing that I ask myself is the, what is the color of the light? And it is blue, a very light blue. Um, then the third thing I ask myself is, what is the pattern of light and shadow? And here's where it gets sticky because I don't see any shadow. This is such an overcast day. There just isn't anything going on as far as light and shadow. And that's what makes it difficult for a colorist to paint because we are all about, this is what's in light and this is what's in shadow and look how they play against each other. So if you, if you aren't gonna be able to approach it with you know, the shape of light and the shape of shadow playing against each other, how would you paint this? If, this, if you're gonna remain true to the photograph, how would you paint it? Well, you would have to do it more like a drawing because drawings are, are tonal. And um, it would, then it would all be done with edges and value. Edges just means, you know, soft transitions versus hard transitions. And um, this painting or this drawing or photograph has a lot of soft edges and a lot of you know very dreamy areas so that's how you would approach it if you were going to remain true to the photo so let's look at the at the painting my student submitted and she's made a decision here to disregard the color that's in the photograph and impose a light onto the scene and there's nothing wrong with doing that, but what it means is you can't refer to the photograph for colors. You need to, uh, you can refer to the photograph for the drawing and for the composition. But now you're going, when you're painting it with color, or with colored light, like a yellow light on here, and the, the reference was not like that, then you're gonna have to rely on what you know about painting that, that um, type of day and how that light interacts with all those objects. So let's look at the, at the photo, at her painting and see if there's a couple areas that I would uh, change. And the first one that comes to my mind is on the river. I see that um, it's got a really dark area right next to a really light area of snow and it's making a focal point there. That little patch is drawing my eye away from the trees. So I would tone that right down. Then um, I noticed that the, the composition is such that, uh, that these really strong lines and these dark lines that go all the way to the back are uh, taking me right on past those trees. And so I will change that. I will uh, soften out those lines and maybe even make uh, edges that I can move out of the river and into 
into the snowy area so I can get over to the trees with my eyes. And then um, the third thing I notice is some indecision about the color of the light, which uh, can happen. So uh, when I look at this painting, I see, oh, there's some yellow light, but there's some red violet light. I see that the shadow is, uh, looks to be uh, cerulean or manganese blue. And that's the kind of shadow that goes with an orange light. So we, what I would do also is I'm gonna impose one color choice for light and shadow onto it. And so, uh, you know, I have a few things that I can choose from, but I look at the focal point trees and I see that they, I think that's kind of a cadmium yellow medium there. So I'm gonna say that has something to do with the light, that color that I see in those trees. And that means that I'm gonna redo the snow with just a very muted, but hint at that color of yellow light. And then that means that the shadow is ultramarine. And I'm gonna change the, the river to have that color um, just because I know it's going to look good against all that um, uh, cat, cat yellow medium. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. All right, so you can see in the far background, I, I tried to capture that um, dreamy soft edge. That's something that I thought was really pretty in the in the reference photo and it's very useful for making things look far away in the landscape when you do a really soft, uh, smudgy kind of edge at the back and middle value. And notice too how I, I really took down those strong lines that were going to the back and I made just a small little connection of blue that lets you jump from the river in over to the trees. So uh, hopefully that that works. Uh, you can see that now the snow is is got the yellow cast, and then there's just a few hints of shadow here and there that are done with the ultramarine blue, uh, a form of that. So I hope you enjoyed this mini lesson. Please give me a like, and thank you very much. See you next time.